In this video, we're going to take a look at computational thinking for iGCSE computer science. Now, before we start, if you're doing GCSE computer science, whether that's Edexcel, WJEC, EDUCAS, or OCR, the pseudocode element of this video will be slightly different as each exam board has their own variation of pseudocode or exam reference language. I'm going to be doing this for CIE IGCSE computer science, which means it'll vary slightly from yours. However, the theory content is exactly the same. So before we start, computational thinking encompasses four key topics. We've got decomposition, abstraction, pattern recognition, and algorithms. And each of these stages needs to be tried and tested and used before we can say we have solved the problem. So we should be abstracting, decomposing, and recognizing patterns, and then creating an algorithm, and that should allow us to have solved the problem using computational thinking. So computational thinking is the thought processes involved in formulating a problem and expressing its solutions in such a way that a computer, whether it's a human or a machine, can effectively carry out. So what that means is we need to follow a bunch of processes, which I'm going to talk about in a second, and express them in a way that somebody can effectively do it properly. So we go through the different processes of decomposition where we break down a complex problem into smaller, more manageable chunks. We've got pattern recognition where we look for similarities among and within the problems so we can solve those and maybe make that a bit more efficient and easier. And then we've got abstraction which focuses on important information only and it ignores the relevant details so it's more of like a top-down view of the overall problem. And then the algorithm is then the stage where we do a step-by-step -step solution to the problem or a set of rules that we follow which then solves the problem for us and we've done our job. Now, Boolean logic is very similar still to what we spoke about for logic gates and in programming for if statements, it's all the same thing essentially, it's logic, it's true or false values. Now, they have prepositions and operators. Now, the prepositions, that's the actual condition you're trying to meet. So you can only have one value at a time, it can either output as true or output as false, and it needs to be specific, it should be unambiguous, so it shouldn't be something that mm, could be true or false, it should be something that is exactly true or exactly false at any one time, but not at the same time. So you've got and, or, and not, just like in logic gates, so an and chains propositions together, so it must be true if both conditions that you put in are true, so if the number is greater than zero and it's less than 10, that's true, because both conditions will be met if the number is say five, and all changes uh, chains propositions together in such a way that it can be true if either of them are true. So it could be if the number is greater than 100, or the number is, great, is less than 10. So if you put in a three, it'll be less than 10, so that'll be true. If you put in 101, that's greater than 100, so that'll be true. But if you put in 75, then that would be false, because it's not either of those. And then you've got not, which doesn't change anything together, it just flips the value. So here's a real world example of where we might use Boolean logic to solve a problem. So these are the rules to determine whether or not a game is ongoing in Hangman. So we've got one preposition, which is if there's at least one blank word, a letter in the word, so we haven't guessed the word yet, that's going to be A. And if the hangman hasn't been fully drawn, that's going to be B. If A and B are both true, then the game is still playing, that's going to be S. So you see it looks very similar to a logic statement you might do, so A and B equals S. And this output here looks very much like a truth table for an AND gate, 0, 0, 0, 1. Now we can see that if there aren't any blank letters in the word and the hangman hasn't been fully drawn, that means then that the game isn't playing anymore because we've guessed the word. Now, if there are, there are some blank letters still, but the hangman has been fully drawn, so it's not, isn't fully drawn, if that makes sense. So if it has been fully drawn, then that's gonna output zero. Whereas if both of these are one, then the output's one, which means it's true, which means the game is still playing. 
Now an algorithm is a sequence of clearly defined steps that describe a process to follow a finite set of unambiguous instructions with clear start and end points. So that's a very mouthy, very detailed definition, but essentially an algorithm is a sequence of steps to solve a problem. So there should be individual steps, they should be precisely defined, and they should be in a specific order. So for example, if you're baking a cake, you're not going to put the mix in the oven before you've actually mixed it all together and whisked it and whatnot. Otherwise, it would become a big lumpy, horrible mess of a cake. So the idea is the algorithm should be really easy to understand. It should be essentially be able to be understood by anybody really. And it should be really broken down into individual steps. If you've got a step that does a couple of things, instead of just one thing, then that makes it a lot harder to understand and follow. Now, algorithms themselves contain four constructs. You've got sequencing, iteration, selection, and variables. So sequencing is making sure your instructions are in an order that solves the task. So making sure it's in the correct order or in some order that makes sense. Iteration is where you repeat a set of instructions until a condition is met. Selection is selecting a piece of code or something to do based on certain conditions. So for example, it might be asking questions that can be quite different if you're a man or a woman. So if gender equals M for male, then ask this set of questions. If gender equals F female, then ask this set of questions. And then the variable is where we just store a value. Next, we've got variables and constants. So we've already said that variables store information or store data. So variables are storage locations, usually in RAM. We usually store things in RAM. However, if you're doing a flow chart for something that isn't a computer, then you might not necessarily have RAM. But it's a data location or a storage location that allows us to store values that our program needs. Now these values can change as a program runs. Now a constant is a storage location and it allows us to store values, so very similar to a variable, but these values cannot change whilst the program is running. And assignment is where we actually put a value in a constant or a variable. Now what some people do in exam questions, they say what's the difference between a constant and a variable or what is a constant? And people write a constant is a variable that cannot change. Now that's an incorrect answer. Now the reason why it's wrong is a variable is something that can change. So if you're saying a constant is a variable that can't change, you're actually saying that a constant is a storage location that can change that cannot change and that doesn't make sense so a constant is separate to a variable or they work similarly when you're programming with them they will look similar they are different so variables can change constants cannot change but both of them store data now Variables and constants all have special names that are referred to as identifiers. Now, these are made by the programmer. So the person solving the problem creates these names. So they should be sensible and they should signify the data that will be stored. So if you're storing someone's first name, then you call the identifier first name. So here's an example. So this is from a game of battleships. So I've got two constants, one's called C size, size and one called empty C. Now, what we do when we create a variable, so this is the assignment, so we've assigned the value of 10 to the constant, so equals 10 is the assignment, c underscore size, that is the identifier, int is the data type, and const means it's a constant. Now the c size would be how big the board is, so it's a 10 by 10 grid, so we shouldn't be changing the size of the board during the game. Now this is sort of a console based game, so this is a no graphics game, it's completely written in command line. So to show an empty piece of C, it puts in the letter zero, the number zero, sorry. So we shouldn't be changing what the zero means halfway through the game. Therefore, it's a constant as well. Now variables, we've got data type, we've got the identifier and the assignment. Now this is for where we choose which rows and which columns to attack. So I might do row three, column six, and that would fire at the um, ship that's there, or it might miss and show the MTC and show zero. Now, you should be able to choose where you attack each turn. The whole point of the game is you choose different 
parts of the grid to attack. Therefore, these should be changed as the program runs. Now, this is what I was saying at the start of the video where it will be slightly different depending on your exam board. So here's an example of the pseudocode you'll be using in CIE IGCSE Computer Science. So when you want to declare a variable, so you want to create a variable, we write declare, we put the name of the variable, a colon, and then the data type. So declare, name, colon, string. For a constant, we use the word constant, the identifier, and then equals the value. To inputs, this is where either an outside, well, it's where some form of outside influence, such as a person, or it might be an input from a machine or a sensor or something like that. When this is entered, we put input, then we put an arrow, then the name. So it could be um, input arrow age or input arrow name, input arrow temperature. Then if we want to output an identifier, output a variable, we put output and the name of the identifier. So output temperature, output name, output age. And then if we want to add a value to our variable, so this is something that's like built into the program hard coded. You put name arrow Bob or value arrow two times three. This is where it's not using an input. And then we've got our data types. So we've got an integer, which is a whole number, a real, which is a number capable of containing a decimal, a char, which is a single character that can include like exclamation marks as well. A string is a series, a series of uh, letters including characters and you can also have numbers in as well and a boolean is true or false so here's an example of some pseudocode so we've got three variables that we've declared so we've got result which is an integer value one and value two which are integers so we get an input from probably a human saying input value one input value two and then we then assign the value of value one plus value two and we put that in result, store it, and then output it to the user. So this is a simple program that adds up two numbers. And that's about it. So don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and add a comment if you are struggling to understand, or you want some questions answering or anything like that. Please make sure that you look at the next set of videos, which is gonna all be about algorithms and then programming. And if you're still struggling with the theory and you want to go back to some of that, then we have a video for each of the theory topics that we've done for the CIE IGCSE course. So as I've said, hope you like that and I'll see you in the next video.